Hello and welcome to this new video and this video is about how you can learn data science. So if you have decided to learn data science while well, you have landed to a right video because this video will going to provide a lot of inputs related to how to start your learning within the field of data science. So data science is a growing field and if you have if you have decided to learn data science I think you have made a right decision because there are a lot of people who are starting their career is going in the direction of data science as well as those who are tenured having a good experience in their existing field either trying to become a data scientist in their own domain or they have no hesitation to even change the domain just so that they are in this booming field of data scientist and we can identify that from the fact that by the end of uh, 2020 the the industry is asking for more than 1 million of data scientists but if you look at the number of resources or the number of uh, experts or the learners in data science it's very less so that's why it is the best time that you can start learning the data science and become a data scientist of future now learning a data science is a process like any other process and you need to know the right steps that you need to take if you want to become a data scientist so let's go ahead and see the first step which is let's take you need to take a small data science problem to basically under, to basically start your journey of data scientist. Well, that's what even I did. So if I go back to around uh, three or four years back, you know, we, I just took a small data set just to understand, uh, what we have explored so far. So up until that time, uh, we have been looking at that data set from the perspective of from the uh, what is going on. So, for example, whether the sale is going up or sale the sale is going down and things like that. But what we were not doing is uh, providing a sort of an insight that what will be the sale of future, right? So, what I did is is just taking a small data set, you know, having around uh, 40 or 45 different data points from the history, and then you know, tried to understand what are the patterns that is coming and then took a small time series for a casting problem, which is one of the data science algorithm that uh, that you need to take and for a cast it. Now, this is just one example. You can take an example related to your field, which is uh, which may be, let's say, if you are coming from IT and systems and you want to become a data scientist in the IT and systems. So you can take uh, uh, a problem like when a particular system will fail or if you are having a scenarios where you know your your databases or your systems are experiencing a lot of load then at what time that load is coming and what is the cause of that that uh, uh, load so this way you will be able to predict most of the times with the help of the variables that uh, when most of the you know problems may come and uh, you can be proactive in that nature. Similarly, if you are coming from a, a call center sort of an environment and if you are working on a call center data, then you can look at the problems of when the volumes of the calls are going high, uh, what is the best time where you can resource allocate the resources, so on and so forth. So you can basically take any any problem related to the data science and just go ahead. Even if you find very difficult, that uh, you are not able to find the problem in your own domain no worries you have ample of uh, problems out there even in my previous videos i have published a lot of small data science projects for those who wants to begin uh, for who wants to begin learning the data science you can just go ahead and take those and uh, you will find that uh, uh, learning data science is not a very huge task if you know what is the right step right steps so let's go ahead and take a uh, look at the uh, next step which is uh, learning the programming language now there are various programming languages for example in the history you have seen maybe java c c++ and uh, even the python or probably r programming if you have not heard about uh, these are all the different types of programming language which provide interface where you can automate the tasks so this these two specific programming languages why I'm saying is either R, R programming or Python programming is because uh, these two language has a lot 
of inbuilt machine learning libraries which is related to the data science so machine learning and data science is a term which i use interchangeably and used even in the industry so so these these uh, programming languages having the lot of libraries which helps you do the data science related work easily so you need to decide whether you need to learn r or python well r programming are for those who are educators or who are you know research students or into their research fellowship program because r is more suited for them and it has a lot of statistical libraries related to the um related to the um, statistical analysis or the data science similarly python is is growing and uh, it it's hot in demand even if you know the general python programming you know there are n number of jobs out there but if you have complemented your general programming or general python programming skills with the data science libraries that it has uh then nothing like it i mean you have the ample opportunities out there to to basically get a job so you need to decide what you need to learn r or python my personal recommendation go for python because i feel that the more opportunities you will have the more happier you will be in in with your career next is uh, integrated development environment very very important that you need to know what are the integrated development environment you need to use you have uh, integrated development environments like uh, jupiter which is my own favorite if you have seen my previous videos uh, this is like a very simple column based uh, or the row based um, integrated development environment or the ide which helps us write all our data science program in a step by step manner which is very helpful to understand how the flow is going on and not only this you can also document it you can also comment it and do all the different things however the best part is the way it has been structured you can read the code very easily execute it very very easily jump from one place to another very easily now uh, apart from the jupiter what you have is uh, pycharm as uh, one of the python interface also you can have for r very specialized uh, ide is the r studio almost i believe 99% of the users use r studio who are working in the r so up either you can choose r studio if you are going towards r programming or you can choose my personal favorite which is uh, jupiter or my next personal favorite is pycharm which which i have both in my system the next thing is data visualization and exploration so data visualization and exploration is a key part to understand the what is going on again what is going on with the data not what will happen but what is going on whether two variables are interacting with each other or not so for example whether sales are being influenced by new products or not or the sales are influenced by entering into the new markets or not so we can collect all of this historical data and see with the help of the data exploration and visualization about how the variables interact with each other and whether they help us predicting the the uh, you know the interest for example the sales uh, whether these variables helps us predicting the sales or whether these variable helps us predicting the inflation let's say if you are in a government uh, side of the world so you may need to understand what will be the gdp what will be the inflation whether the rain will going to happen next year or not or whether it will going to happen low or high or medium rain all of these things um, that that you can basically have a lot of historical data and analyze visualize with the help of data exploration and visualization so within the r or python you have lot of libraries so within r you have like ggplot which is uh, used for data visualization and then you have um, dplyr for data exploration similarly on python side you have pandas for data connection data exploration and uh, for visualization you have matplotlib you have seaborn very specialized libraries that you can take and uh, do this work and not only this you can use the proprietary platforms which are again licensed based but licensed based but very good for example tableau or clickview or clicksense or power bi i mean there are n number of tools my personal favorite is clickview pick uh, i'm sorry uh, the tableau clickview is also one of my favorite and i started learning with that 
but recently uh, I have been from past couple of years working with Tableau and I find it, you know, doing the visualization work is pretty easy. So you can uh, you can learn via those tools and do the data visualization and exploration in couple of minutes. The only differentiation between these tools and R or Python is that within the R or Python, since they are programming language, you have to write each and every step. Uh, let's say, for example, you need to create a bar chart. You need to first identify uh, what is a column. You need to identify what is the row and then put them into a structure if you are aggregating it. And then if there are labeling, coloring and some other sort of customization that you want to do for every step, you have to write a program. But if you are into the Power BI or Tableau or ClickView, ClickSense, you will just do a most of the time drag and drop and with that you will be able to easily create the visualization so whatever you will do in couple of hours within uh python or r in that you can do in couple of minutes within these uh, tools the only catch is that they are licensed based and you need to pay a fees to use them after that uh, you need to know the machine learning algorithms so there are algorithms for classification regression and uh, clustering so all of these are very uh, very much used uh, uh, algorithms within the machine learning and within the python and r you have specialized package the only thing is you need to know what are those para what are those packages first of all and then how you need to use them because you cannot directly just go ahead and put, provide the data you need to make sure that you are following certain steps before actually applying to the algorithm and even after the application of the algorithm uh, once you need to improve the result there is a concept called hyperparameter tuning which helps us you which helps you to uh, improve the results of the output so most of the time you know it's an iterative process where you keep on changing the parameters and even sometimes automating it and i've shown it in one of my previous video tutorials that how you can do hyperparameter tuning so all of these things is a part of your machine learning or the data science learning journey where you the more experiment you do with hyperparameter tuning changing the uh, variables and so on and so forth you will learn more about the particular type of problem after that uh what you have is basically uh, a good understanding of uh, statistics algebra and calculus because these are some of the very important components of the data science learning which you will encounter day to day basis so having a good understanding of statistics is must so that you can interpret the results which are coming for example you have metrics like a p value or f statistics or ssr sse from the regression or you have a uh, uh, confusion metric you have um, you know uh, something like r squared from the regression so there are n number of statistics you really need to understand uh, related to the problem area whether you if you are coming from time series forecasting you need to understand uh, you know the trend the seasonality the aic criteria and uh, acf pacf so these terms not to uh, you know give you a hard feeling but just wanted to let you know that every algorithm has some set of parameters that you need to know once you know these parameters you know you will be done like for example with every algorithm there are like three or four parameters so if you know that you will be done and once you will use it two three times you will be pretty much uh, okay with that whenever you use it next time so don't uh, get afraid of it uh, you know just start simple and keep learning and i would i'm sure that uh, very easily you will start getting these terms and interpreting it because their applicability is constant i mean uh, even after 10 years their uh, applicability will not change it's just that in 10 years you will get a lot of experience that if somebody is saying you put this particular term along with a value you will be able to just quickly identify whether this is in your favor that means in the favor of the application of data science on which on on the data on which you are applying the algorithm is is favorable or not so after that uh, you have uh, something oops i messed it up so what you have is basically model testing 
so model testing is basically an approach by which you make sure that your mo model will run properly into the production and that's why i have the production rollout uh, in the end that uh, before the production rollout you need to make sure you do a model testing from various perspective like based on the n number of users based on the how much data that you are supplying when the data will increase what will going to happen in what scenarios the model will going to fail all of these scenario testing that you will do and uh, make sure that your model will be working mostly fine in most of the environment and finally you will do the production rollout to the business users after getting their feedback and all and this is where you use the uh, systems like if you are from our studio maybe you use shiny as one of the one of the uh, packages and i have given a tutorial on that about uh, how you can develop the shiny applications the web applications similarly from if you are coming from the python side uh, you have multiple packages for example you have dash as one of the interactive platform for rolling out the projects or you have flask as one of the library in which you can develop web application where you can roll out your projects where other people can use it easily so this is basically an entire ecosystem that you have related to the data science and uh, i would not say that it is 100 percent because this field is fast so i want to be brutally honest here but what i've tried to give you is from a beginner perspective based on what i have seen i have observed what are the things that are there one should know should learn step by step and all of this is something which i've given step by step so if you follow that i'm sure that uh, you will be able to gain maximum about uh, the data science process the machine learning process and be able to make a career in the field of data science so i wish you all the very best and please let me know what do you think about uh, this video and if you have any other observation from the data science learning perspective you let me know and i will be very glad to know also sharing will help the community as well so whatever how much you will share will going to uh, impact uh, impact the community as well as me in terms of what new things that you are learning and we can learn each other from ourselves so that's about it and uh, please don't forget to share the video with your friends and colleagues and i will meet you in the next video